Jennifer Reed. Hello, my name is Jennifer Reed. I'm a citizen of Scranton, a taxpayer, and a concerned person living in this community. Here I stand, another week has passed, and I am still disappointed in our city. Here are some quotes and promises made to the people of our community. January 7, 2020, the following lines were spoken. One, to bring back certainty to Scranton. Two, we are going to get to do this together. And three, we cannot afford to be divided. Do you know who spoke those words by any chance? Do not. That was the mayor. Here's another one. They were losing hope and they needed people to believe in and that they can trust. Any idea for that one? Nope. Dr. Rothschild. Yeah. Mr. If you outburst again, I'm gonna have you removed. You cannot be interrupting the speakers. It's their time, not your time. Can we pause my time? You're not your time. Are you kidding me? Go ahead. Okay. Um, Scranton's motto, embracing our people, our traditions, and our future. To embrace means to accept and support. Tradition is a long established custom. Future is a period of time still to come. And if you put it all together, to accept and support the long established custom for a period of time still to come. It seems like the custom of this city is to reject, neglect, and push out certain members of our community, namely the homeless. When I asked last week how many people were, given, were or have been homeless, not one of you had raised your hand. But many of us on this side of the room did. So I will ask again. How many people in this room, if you could stand up, are homeless or have been? Uh, you have to address council, please not the audience. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So the people that are standing up are the ones that have been homeless or are currently homeless. Now, if they are not homeless, they can sit down, or if they uh, don't want to be homeless, they can sit down. So, so all of the people that sat down decided that they did not want to be homeless, but at this point they really don't have much of a choice. You are disconnected from the people that you served, and I said previously, many of those without homes are taxpayers with jobs. Where's the help that they need? Can you tell me how many people are homeless right now in this city? Any idea? I cannot. Okay. So as of 2018, there was 159, but I'm sure that number has only gone up since then. How many shelters are there for the homeless people in the city? Night shelters, not day shelters. Well, it depends on what, what you, you consider nice shelters. Uh, shelters where people can sleep at night, single individual people, not mother and children. There's one. Only one, with six beds for women and 20 beds for men. Do you know that there's only one other shelter uh, if the weather is freezing? That's it. Um, for the most part, people rely on small groups together, in tents or whatever they have, to keep themselves safe. They get their resources together and they try to work together to survive the best they can. Most people do not want to see them, but they also refuse to find resources or a solution to house them. My daughter was here with me last week and she held up a sign. And I'm not sure if anybody remembers what it said, but for those who weren't here or didn't see it, Lackawanna County, the county that we are currently living in, has 126 homeless children in Scranton, 16 homeless children in Old Forge, 25 homeless children in Mid Valley, and 14 homeless in Riverside. And this is according to the PA Department of Education. And I'm sure that those numbers are most likely underrecorded. Um, so I ask, what is your plan going forward to make a change? How is the city plan to open more shelters, or do they? There's more homeless people on the street and not, obviously not enough shelters, 
with that many people that are homeless and 26 beds. It, the math doesn't add up. And how is the city going to assist me and other members of the community to do the jobs and take care of the people who we are taking care of that the city should be? This isn't our job. We're doing this because we care about these people, and obviously more than the city does, because we're doing the best we can to make sure that they can survive. There's people in cities that freeze to death because they have no choice. I don't think anybody would even blink an eye, bat an eye, if somebody froze to death in this city because they weren't given an option to have a shelter. As it was said earlier, people are losing hope and they need to, be, to have people to believe in and that they can trust. And they're not trusting many people right now. We do not get paid to do this job, but we do it because we need to do it and because we care about them. For every meal that I serve or every supply that I hand out, do you know what I charge someone? A single hug, that's it. And that may be the only one that they receive in a long time. When I make a promise to someone, I keep it. So why can't the city? Can I bring these up, just handouts with the questions? Sure. Michael Warmuth, 